Hello, welcome in the 12th lecture of convective heat transfer. In our last lecture, we have discussed about convective heat transfer inside a pipe. From there, we will be continuing in this and we will be mainly seeing over here thermally developed slug flow in a duct. Okay? So, though we will be starting from uh, a duct flow, but mainly we will be concentrating on the thermally developed slug flow inside a duct. Okay? So, let me show you that what are the main points we will be discussing in this lecture. We will be starting from the derivation of energy equation. We will be stressing on laminar slug flow. Okay? Last lecture we have discussed what is slug flow. So, we will be discussing from that point in case of laminar slug flow, what is the derivation of energy equation. We will be also mentioning zonal scale analysis depending on the energy equation different components of the energy equation we will be reducing into simplified form using scale analysis. Then we will be going for evaluation of temperature profile okay, for laminar slug flow in a duct and at the end we will be discussing about evaluation of Nusselt number for large axial distance that means away from the uh, entrance length that means in case of uh, fully developed thermal boundary region what is the Nusselt number that too in case of slug flow where uh, velocity boundary layer is developed fully. So, in that case we will be discussing. So, let me start from uh, the slug flow point of view. Uh, in last class we have discussed that in case of slug flow we will be having a situation where velocity will be more or less constant W is equals to W average. In this case thermal boundary layer actually dominates over the uh, velocity boundary layer. So, uh, here you will be finding out that majority of the thermal boundary layer portion we will be getting that W is equals to W average or constant. Okay? And this happens majority of the times for uh, uh, low uh, Prandtl number cases. Okay? Uh, as it is W equals to W average, we will be finding out that there is no uh, U or V that means there is no cross directional velocity uh, in the uh, pipeline, no radial velocity and uh, on the other hand of the perpendicular direction of the radial direction we are having no velocity. So, U and V those are actually 0, azimuthal velocity and radial velocities will be 0. Okay? Only axial velocity we will be having that too it is a constant. Okay? So, here I have shown schematically what situation we will be having. Let us say we are having this flow having constant velocity as well as constant temperature T i and uh, we are keeping the uh, tube wall at some constant temperature T w let us say. Okay? Uh, radial coordinate and uh, axial coordinates are shown over here as r bar and z bar. Right? So, uh, in last lecture we have uh, mentioned that energy equation will be reducing to uh, in left hand side will be having the convection, uh, right hand side will be having the conduction. So, rho C p uh, u bar, so this is the vector of the uh, velocity, so it will be having three components u, v as well as w. So, u bar into del t okay, and is equals to in the right hand side we are having the conduction k del square t. Right? So, in case of slug flow as I have told u and v is equals to 0. So, uh, two components of this uh, del t will be becoming 0 only the third component will be remaining. So, here you see rho C p w average and del del z of t is actually remaining from this uh, 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 special derivative of temperature. Okay? Uh, in the right hand side uh, that kind of uh, facility we are not having because velocity is not being multiplied over here. So, all the terms we have kept over here only thing is that we have considered that it is azimuthally symmetric. So, uh, theta component we have not involved over here. Okay? So, this is the uh, radial conduction this two term and last one is the axial conduction. Right? Okay, uh, uh, here rho C p uh, is involved in the left hand side and k thermal conductivity is involved in the right hand side. Okay. So, let us proceed further as we know that we are uh, interested to non dimensionalize this equation. So, the parameters for non dimensionalization are uh, like this. So, first let us consider the non dimensionalized velocity w is nothing but your uh, w bar uh, by w average whatever the uh, incoming velocity we are having over here. So, w average. Okay. Radial component obviously we can you know non dimensionalize by uh, the uh, tube radius. So, r equals to r bar by r naught. 
let us do the uh, non dimensionalization of the axial component also uh, by R naught because uh, tube radius is always fixed and uh, known to us. Okay. Uh, now, this is the important part uh, what we are doing over here for the uh, temperature non dimensional channel is that theta is equals to T minus T w by T i minus T w. Okay. So, T i is known over here what is the incoming uh, fluid velocity T w is the corresponding wall velocity. Okay. So, in this way we are non dimensionalizing or of all the variables from for my equation. Okay. So, uh, next let us see after this non dimensionalization what equation we have obtained similar kind of equation last, uh, last uh, lecture also I have shown. Uh, so, in the left hand side uh, the sole uh, term for convection will be uh, turning out to be del theta del z okay. and in the right hand side we are having the conductions radial and axial conductions and all this k by rho C p and the corresponding uh, radial uh, parameters R naught will be giving rise this 1 by Peclé number okay, where Peclé number definition is nothing but alpha which is k by rho C p and then w average into uh, 2 R naught. So, this Peclé number is defined based on the diameter of the tube. Okay. Uh, let us also see the corresponding boundary conditions. So, boundary conditions here uh, first at the wall r equals to 1 means uh, r bar is equals to r naught. So, this uh, at wall r equals to 1 we will be having theta equals to 0 because theta we have defined in that fashion only if uh, at the wall if the temperature is T w. So, T w minus T w by T i minus T w becomes 0. Okay. So, the boundary condition at r equals to 1 is theta equals to 0 and at z equals to 0 that means at the beginning of the tube okay at z equals to 0 theta will be equals to 1 that also we can get from here at the beginning t will be ti so ti minus t w by ti minus t w becomes 1 okay so here we are having these two boundary conditions for r equals to 1 and z equals to 0 but uh, here you see we require some more boundary conditions also because uh, R is having second order and uh, Z is having second order over here. So, let us find out uh, rest boundary conditions. Uh, first, let me see what is the extreme limit of Z, okay. so far away from the uh, entry of the tube. Okay. So, Z tends to infinity. Okay. Uh, at present we do not know what will be the value that will depend on the uh, wall temperature, okay. what wall temperature you are giving. But one thing we can say that obviously theta will be bounded there will be no infinite value of theta okay that means no infinite value of temperature so let us consider that at z tends to infinity theta will be some finite number or bounded okay uh, on the other hand uh, we have considered r equals to 1 which is at the wall r equals to 0 will be at the uh, uh, axis of the tube. Okay. So, at axis of the tube also theta should be finite. Okay. So, we do not know what will be the profile of the temperature, but still theta should be finite it will not be infinite. So, these two conditions we need to also see uh, that these are uh, being satisfied. Okay. So, we are having two boundary conditions on R and two boundary conditions on Z respectively okay, for this equation. So, we have uh, non dimensionalized the equation. Now, let us see that uh, um, this case uh, uh, slack flow case uh, uh, how can we distribute into different zones. Okay. Uh, this zones we will be using for different scaling analysis and uh, reducing the equation into uh, simplified form. Okay. So, we are having over here a schematic. So, you see this is the tube okay, which is having constant wall temperature, the incoming fluid stream is having temperature T equals to T i and it is entering at some constant velocity W average, okay, uh, W bar average and here let us see, see uh, these are the uh, let us say thermal boundary layers, okay. they are uh, developing over here and up to this we are having the uh, thermal entrance length. Okay. Now, uh, based on this uh, figure we can clearly see that there are different regions. So, first region we can say uh, this, this uh, triangular region I should not say triangular this region bounded region where thermal this, this is just above the th thermal boundary layer or below the thermal boundary layer from this side. So, in this region we can find out that temperature will be more or less remaining uh, constant which can be the uh, inflow uh, temperature. So, that we have to find out. So, this is a separate region we are calling this one as region 1. Uh, 
in the same fashion just below the boundary layer near the tube okay we are having this boundary layer developing zone okay so uh, uh, so this zone we are calling here also you will be having two here also you will be having two this zone let us call as uh, zone 2 uh, after this thermal entrance length okay where uh, uh, thermally developed flow is occurring so in that case we will be saying this is your zone 3 okay and uh, near the entry this is also very critical point so near the entry this side as well as this side we will be calling uh, zone 4 okay so these four zones we will be seeing separately over here how the uh, equation is changing and how uh, uh, boundary conditions are changing so let us start with first zone 1 so region 1 okay in this region 1 you can find out uh, as it is starting from the beginning of the tube r can uh, span up to the tube radius okay so uh, what we can write down then r r bar is actually in the order of r naught so that means small r will be obviously of the order of 1 okay because small r is nothing but r bar by r naught during non dimensionalization we have introduced on the other hand uh, z uh, z is also of order 1 okay why because uh, z bar we have also considered z we have also considered z bar by r naught okay and this zone is very small zone this zone is very small zone so we have kept the z also of the order of r naught so this is z of the order of uh, uh, 1 okay now let us see if we put these two orders over here as well as we consider uh, very high Peclet number okay then how this equation is going to uh, reduce okay so as both are of order 1 so uh, uh, no coefficient will be coming out in left hand side and right hand side of the equation okay so at high Peclet number uh, region so all these right hand side terms can be cancelled okay because high Peclet number means 1 by Peclet number will be uh, 10 to uh, 0 okay so we get del theta del z is actually 0 so our equation uh, turns down to uh, del theta del z equals to 0 this simplified form okay so if you integrate it once definitely it will be theta equals to 1 or t equals to ti it uh, uh, well it validates our uh, knowledge also that we can find out whenever uh, the just above the boundary layer thermal boundary layer we will be finding out the temperature is more or less equivalent to your uh, incoming uh, temperature ti okay so in that case t equals to ti whatever solution we have obtained this is quite logical right okay next let us see uh, another region so uh, let us see this fourth region now region 4 over here so in case of region 4 we are having 1 minus r okay 1 minus r is nothing but if this is r then 1 minus r is here to there okay so from wall to uh, the center so 1 minus r obviously uh, for this region 4 will be in terms of delta naught delta naught let us say is the uh, boundary layer thickness so 1 minus r is of the order of delta naught okay so if it is of the order of delta naught and as this zone is very small obviously z will be also very small so z we are also keeping in the order of delta naught okay so this zone is very small so this is z uh, uh, of the order of delta naught very small zone around the entry okay so if we consider that let us see how the uh, conduction that means right hand term and convection in the left hand term comes out to be so if you can see from here conduction term everywhere we are having r square r and r r square and here z square so one one by delta square because both are of the order of uh, delta naught so one by delta naught square is coming out so the order of the conduction term becomes one by peclet number here one by peclet number into one by delta naught square due to this uh, uh, spatial coordinates okay spatial coordinate square in every term so it becomes the conduction order in the same fashion if you see the convection side here we are having del theta del z so here obviously 1 by delta naught will come out due to this z so we are having this conduction and convection uh, scales if we equate then we can find out the convo convection scale conduction scale equals to convection scale if we do then we can find out delta naught comes out in the order of 1 by Peclet number okay so if you uh, just use this one uh, 
uh, that delta naught is equals to 1 by Peclet number and try to solve this equation. This requires the uh, full solution of the Navier-Stokes equation because using this we cannot neglect any term of this equation. Okay, so it requires full solution of this Navier-Stokes equation via numerical methodology. So we are not going uh, in that uh, range. So let's say uh, region four will be very critical. We are not going in that range. Let us concentrate in zone two and zone three respectively. So let's first see zone two. So in region two, you can find out uh, that. In case of region 2, it is little bit lengthier zone. So, we are considering that Z is of the order of 1. Okay. So, Z is of the order of 1. Remember, in case of region 1 also, we have considered Z is of the order of 1. So, the axial length of section 1 and section 2 will be more or less similar. Okay. So, <laughs> Z is of the order of 1 we have considered over here. So, if we do so, then we can find out from here that if Z is of the order of 1, then we can find out that uh, from both the sides if we put the uh, uh, scaling analysis of Z over here, we can find out that we are getting delta T is of the order of 1 by root over of Peclet number. Okay. So, why? Because here we will be finding out that uh, the dominant term will be this one, the dominant term will be this one and in this side we are having 2 by Peclet number. So, uh, 1 by delta square will be coming over here. So, which ultimately will be giving us delta t is of the order of 1 by root over of Peclet number. Okay. Side by side let us also consider as delta t is 1 by root over of Peclet number 1 minus r is also of the order of 1 by Peclet number because delta t is nothing but the thermal boundary layer thickness which is nothing but 1 minus r. Okay. Next, uh, let us try to consider the similarity variable as we have obtained the thermal boundary layer thickness as root over of 1 by 1 by root over of p. So, let us consider uh, similarity variable is eta 1 minus r Peclet number to the power half. Okay. So, if we consider this, then we will be finding out both z as well as eta uh, in this region 2 becomes of the order of 1 okay. because 1 minus r is of the order of 1 by root P e. So, 1 by root P e and uh, root P e cancels out. So, eta becomes of the order of 1. Okay. So, both eta and z becomes of the order of 1. So, let us see the equations now. Before uh, going to the equations, let us first do the uh, derivatives. So, let me first uh, find out del theta by del r. So, del theta by del r will be nothing but del theta by del eta into uh, uh, del uh, eta by del uh, del eta by del r. Okay. So, del eta by del r will be nothing but uh, minus of uh, Peclet number to the power half. Okay. So, this minus of Peclet number to the power half comes over here and del theta by del eta is over here. Okay. We can also see the second derivative is will be giving nothing but Peclet number into del square theta del eta square. Okay. So, these two uh, um, uh, uh, terms will be uh, required in my uh, uh, conduction term, okay. conduction term in the energy equation. So, <laughs> let us uh, now see that if we put all these uh, uh, terms in my energy equation, then how it uh, looks like. So, before going there, uh, we have to also find out what is del theta del z. So, del theta del z, we will be seeing over here that in case of del theta del z, both uh, our uh, Peclet number and both uh, theta, we have to consider as the function of uh, uh, function of uh, this one uh, function of r and z. Okay. So, here if we put uh, uh, all the terms in the in the energy equation, so you can find out 2 by Peclet number. So, this is nothing but your del square theta del r square. Basically, we are using our energy equation as I have shown over here. So, 2 by Peclet number del square theta del r square is nothing but Peclet number into del square theta del eta square. So, that we are putting over here. Then 2 by Peclet number multiplied by 1 by r. So, this is 1 by r. This, this term is nothing but your uh, eta. Okay. So, this is uh, here from you can get the value of r. So, this is becoming actually your r. Okay. And then del theta del r. Del theta del r is nothing but minus Peclet number to the power half del theta del n. So, that we are putting over here. Okay. 
minus terms go, uh, goes there ok and then last term obviously 2 by Peclet number del square theta del z square ok. So, a little bit simplification if you do of this equation this turns out to be uh, this one this turns out to be this one ok. Now, if we take uh, Peclet number tends to infinity for large Peclet number cases we can write down the, that these two terms uh, axial uh, conduction term and uh, this first uh, second term of the radial conduction goes to 0. So, only we get uh, del theta del z is equals to 2 into delta square theta del eta square. So, this uh, is the equation for the region 2 we get for large Peclet number limits. Okay. Then let us see our uh, main component that means region 3 for what we have uh, uh, sta we have started to discuss uh, at the beginning of this lecture thermally developed region. So, in the thermally developed region uh, obviously R will be of the order of 1 because full pipeline is uh, coming into consideration and in case of axial length z is of the order of L e because L e is the thermal entrance length. So, after the thermal entrance length only this uh, region 3 will be coming into picture. Okay. So, as we have already considered the r and z scales. So, uh, let us uh, uh, do non dimensionalization of z okay, as uh, capital Z. So, capital Z is nothing but uh, small z by L e. So, now capital Z becomes of the order of 1. Okay. Uh, then, uh, if you see the uh, equation once again, if you see the equation once again, if you see the equation once again from here you can find out that the dominant term uh, in this in this side will be becoming uh, uh, these radial terms ok. These radial terms will be becoming the dominant term and uh, this term axial conduction term is not that much dominant in the uh, developed thermally developed zone ok. But here in this case we are having 1 by L e ok and here we are having 2 by Peclé number. So, if you consider the orders then you will be finding out L e is of the order of Peclé number ok. So, that we are writing over here that we are writing over here that if we go to the scaling analysis for this region 3 in the equation then we get L e is of the order of Peclet number. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, what we have uh, obtained is that if we put this L e equals to Peclet number in the equation then you can find out uh, that both this uh, left hand side convection and right hand side conductions are actually releasing P e's. Okay. So, here in the axial conduction we are having this uh, L e square and in this uh, convection term also del theta del z also 1 by L e is coming out. Okay. Then if you try to uh, simplify it further then you can find out that del theta del z uh, becomes 2 into del square theta del r square plus 1 by r del theta del r plus 2 by Peclet number square. So, just I have multiplied this whole equation by L e. So, you can find out this L e and here L e by P e as both are of same order. So, that can be cancelled. So, 2 into this term remains and here we are getting 2 into uh, 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 2 into L e into Peclet number uh, 2 into L e by Peclet number L e square. Okay. So, there also we can get 2 by Peclet number square as Peclet number is equals to L e. Okay. Now, at uh, uh, large Peclet number cases for large Peclet number cases Peclet number uh, tends to infinity what we can do this term we can neglect. So, our equation simplifies to this uh, uh, partial form of this equation. So, that means del theta by del z equals to 2 into delta square theta del r square plus 1 by r del theta del r. Okay. So, this is my equation and subsequently boundary condition remains as usual same. So, at z equals to 0 theta equals to 1 that means at the entry at r equals to 1 theta equals to 0 that means at the wall and at r equals to 0 it will be bounded. Okay. So, theta will be bounded. Huh? So, this is the equation and corresponding boundary conditions for region 3. Okay. Next let us see how we can solve this. Okay. Here you can see that we are having two variables r and z let us try uh, separation of variable. Okay. So, we are trying to write down using the concept of separation of variables that theta which is a function of r and z we can write down they are separate functions of r and z. So, f of r multiplied by g of z. Okay. So, uh, this is the concept of separation of variable taken from mathematics. 
Okay, so if we use that, then uh, let us try to put this uh, theta equals to f into g in our uh, previous equation as I have showed this equation. Okay, so if you put that one, then we can find out f g dashed. Okay, because uh, in the left hand side we had actually uh, del theta del z. Okay, so del theta del z means f will be uh, remaining constant. It is not a function of z, and z will be becoming z dashed. Okay, so f g dashed. Similarly, in the right hand side, g as it is a function of z, uh, uh, it will not be becoming uh, you know uh, derivative of the uh, z, uh, r direction. So g we are keeping constant over here. Only the f we have done the derivative. So, for the second derivative del square theta del r square it is f double dashed and for single derivative it is, if it is uh, it is f dashed. Okay. So, little bit of side changing if we do then we can write down g dashed by 2 g is equals to 1 by f uh, into f double dashed plus 1 by r into f dashed. Okay. Now, you see in the left hand side we are having only functions of g's and in the right hand side we are having the functions of f. Okay. So, uh, in the left hand side we are having actually z dependence, in the right hand side we are having the f dependence. Okay. This is only possible whenever uh, both of them are uh, tending towards or both of them are equating to a constant, otherwise it is not possible. Okay. Uh, so, we are considering that both the sides are equals to constant. Okay. So, if we do so, now there are different options, this constant can be first uh, first case this constant can be uh, greater than 0. Okay. So, positive constant. If it is positive constant, let us write down that constant is nothing but lambda square. Okay. So, lambda is a uh, natural number. So, lambda square is the positive one. Okay. So, if we do so, uh, then what we can do for the left hand side, we can write down g dashed is equals to uh, 2 lambda square g. So, it is lambda square. So, g dashed equals to 2 lambda square g. Okay, so, 2 lambda square g. From here we get g is equals to nothing but uh, e to the power uh, 2 lambda square z if we integrate this equation once. Okay. Uh, simple integration you can follow uh, that one from mathematics. Okay. And on the right hand side, so that means this f term if we equate with lambda square, we get this type of equation f double dash plus 1 by r f dash minus of lambda square f equals to 0. Okay. Here also this is a very simple equation if we try to solve this one, f will come as exponential series. Okay. So, the solution if lambda square if the constant is positive the solution comes as uh, multiplication of uh, two exponentials. Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> so, this is case 1 if the constant is uh, positive if the constant is coming out to be positive. Next let us see if the constant is equal to 0. Okay. If the constant is equal to 0 uh, life becomes very simple. So, here we will be finding out that g dashed becomes 0. So, g is equals to c. So, g dashed becomes 0, so it becomes c and for the f part, so we are getting f double dashed plus 1 by r f dashed is equals to 0, okay. constant is 0, second case. So, you can find out little bit of integration from uh, this equation, if we proceed like this, then we will be finding out f is equals to a ln r plus beta plus b. Okay. So, here also we can find out what is the value of theta. So, it becomes c into uh, a uh, ln r plus b. Okay. So, these two cases are very simple. Uh, next, let us see if the constant becomes negative. Okay. So, if the constant becomes negative means constant becomes minus lambda square. So, in that case g will be uh, very simple. So, g dash becomes minus 2 lambda square g. So, g becomes once again exponential. So, e to the power this time minus. So, g equals to e to the power minus 2 lambda square z. Okay. But for the f, the equation of f goes like this. Okay. f double dash plus 1 by r f dash plus lambda square f equals to 0. Okay. If you do multiplication of this equation with r square, then this type of equation comes. Okay. r square f double dash plus r f dash plus lambda square r square f equals to 0. Right. So, this equation uh, if we try to solve then uh, uh, the equation uh, the solution comes in the form of Bessel function. Okay. So, uh, Bessel function is uh, uh, once again a mathematical concept you can uh, go back to your mathematical uh, knowledge and from there we can write down that solution of this type of equation is nothing but uh, uh, theta uh, which is nothing but t minus t w by t i minus t w as per non dimensionalization is equals to. So, Bessel function the solution of this equation is nothing but summation of m equals to 0 to infinity c m j naught lambda m r. Okay. So, this much is the solution and here g is coming over here. 
okay so uh, we can we can write down uh, the overall solution of theta in this fashion whenever constant is negative okay so here you see this j naught is nothing but the uh, basel function of order 0 of first kind okay uh, uh, <laughs> now let us see that what is my heat flux so for calculation of heat flux q that is nothing but k del t del r at r equals to r naught so if we use our uh, non dimensionalization scheme we can write down k ti minus t w so this comes due to non dimensionalization of your t to theta and by r naught this r naught comes due to non dimensionalization of r bar to r okay and uh, the point becomes r equals to r naught to r equals to 1 okay so, uh, here you see we required this del theta del r term. So, uh, as we are having this theta, so let us try to calculate del theta del r. So, del theta del r, see this is not a function of z, uh, r. So, only the function of r is over here in the Bessel function. So, this becomes same summation C m lambda m. Okay. So, as we are doing the uh, uh, in derivation of j naught with respect to r, so lambda m will come out. So, lambda m j naught dashed so this is the derivative of j naught actually j naught dashed lambda m r and rest e to the power minus 2 lambda m square z will be remaining same okay now if we put this necessary r equals to 1 in this derivative then we get this lambda m r becomes lambda m rest things remain same okay so we have got del theta by del r at r equals to 1 in this fashion of fashion okay Next, let us uh, take asymptotic solution of the large z if you are going for large z. Here you see in the previous one we have found out del theta del r as a function of a series. Now, if uh, z is very large then uh, we have to only consider the leading term that means m equals to 0 term. So, here you see we have considered for large z only the m equals to 0 term that means in place of c m we have put c 0 in place of j m we have put in place of uh, lambda m we have put uh, uh, lambda 0 and in here also in place of lambda m we have put lambda 0. So, this is the asymptotic solution for large z we have found out the value of theta. Okay. Similarly, del theta by del r which we are interested for finding out the heat flux will be coming in this fashion. Okay. Uh, uh, now, we know that we require this q. So, I have put this del theta by del r over here okay, from the previous equation here. Uh, del theta by del r I have put so k t i minus t w by r w will be remaining same ok k t i minus t w by r w r naught will be remaining same and here this is by del theta by del r at r equals to 1 right. Uh, next our interest is to find out the heat transfer coefficient. So, heat transfer coefficient h is nothing but q by t w minus t b ok. So, uh, q by t w minus t b is over here. Uh, so, you can see that uh, this T b minus T w can be written as uh, T i minus T w into theta b. Uh, what is this theta b? If temperature becomes bulk temperature, then non dimensionalization of that we will be writing down like theta b. Okay. Now, what is this theta b if we try to find out? So, theta b is nothing but T b. So, in place of T we are writing uh, bulk temperature T b. So, uh, theta b is nothing but T b minus T w by T i minus T w. Now, in last lecture I have discussed how this bulk temperature can be found out. So, that same formulation I am writing over here 0 to 1 uh, uh, w theta r dr uh, divided by 0 to 1 w r dr. Okay. Now, as w is constant, uh, okay, so uh, what we can do and uh, w bar is constant rather and w is equals to 1, then what we can do integration of this one will be giving me half. Okay, so, this becomes 2 over here. So, my theta b becomes 2 into 0 to 1 theta r dr. Right? Next, let us see what is this theta b uh, once again. Uh, so, if we, if we go back to our uh, theta equation over here, uh, this is our theta equation rather than uh, let us go back to the previous one. So, theta equation was in the form of a series solution like this. Okay. So, from there if we try to find out what is theta b, so theta b once again comes like this. Okay. Theta b once again comes like this. Why? Because here we are having integration of theta r dr. So, theta we know as a series solution multiplied by r and then we have to integrate from 0 to 1. So, same thing we are doing over here. You see our theta was C m j naught 
dr multiplied by this e to the power term here we have multiplied by r and we try to integrate uh, this radial uh, function uh, with respect to r from 0 to 1. So, this is my uh, theta b. Now, what is this value of this integration? To understand this we have to do little bit of discussion of uh, Bessel function. So, here is that one. So, in the actually the Bessel equation is this one r y double dash plus uh, y dash minus uh, plus lambda m square r y equals to 0. Now, here you see if we if we actually uh, club this two term and try to uh, make a derivative. So, it, it can be written as d d r of r y dash ok uh, and uh, this can be kept uh, simply uh, lambda m square r y. Now, you try to integrate uh, both sides and put the limit from 0 to 1 then you will be getting 0 to 1 d d r of r y dash d r plus lambda m square 0 to 1 r y d r ok and, and as it is actually uh, definite integral. So, in the right hand side we will be having equals to 0. Okay. Now, here you see uh, what can be done this integration 0 to 1 r y dr is actually 1 by lambda m square and then let us put this y value y was actually Bessel function. So, this is the solution of the Bessel function this Bessel function. So, that will be becoming j naught dashed as it is y dashed this will be becoming j naught dashed. Okay. So, lambda m j naught dashed lambda m r and due to this lambda m r 1 r will be coming out. Okay. So, here you see the limit we have kept as 0 to 1. Okay. Now, if you put the limit then lambda m uh, and lambda m 1 lambda m from here can be cancelled this lambda m will be remaining. So, we see the value of this integration is nothing but minus g naught dashed by lambda m. Okay. So, here this we have put over here r y. So, this is actually y. Okay. So, r y dr which is nothing but minus j naught dashed by lambda m. Right. So, in this way we have got the non-dimensionalized bulk temperature theta b. Okay. And as we have got uh, uh, theta b for large z asymptotic value large z will be taking only m equals to 0 part. So, if you take that then it will be becoming in this fashion. Okay. Uh, in place of m I have put the values of 0. Okay. Now, it is time to calculate the heat transfer coefficient. So, heat transfer coefficient h uh, it requires q and theta b this we already we have discussed in the previous uh, slide. So, h is nothing but q and theta b is required both we have uh, separately uh, derived theta b we have derived over here and uh, q we have derived over here. Okay. So, this two if we club and put down over here then we can see that j naught dashed can be cancelled from denominator and numerator and little bit of simplification will be giving me simply k by r naught into lambda naught square by 2. Okay. Now, let us try to find out further Nusselt number. So, if we go for Nusselt number this is nothing but h 2 naught 2 r naught by k. So, h already we have found out. So, here from we can get if we put the value of h over here we get it becomes only lambda naught square. Now, the value of lambda naught from Bessel function uh, concept is nothing but 2.4048. So, if we put the value of lambda naught the Nusselt number we obtain uh, as 5.7831. So, this is very important uh, uh, concept that uh, in case of a pipe flow in uh, thermally developed region the Nusselt number becomes 0 0.57831. Okay. So, here we will be uh, ending our uh, lecture let us summarize what we have done. Uh, so, summarization is like this that governing equation for forced convection inside a duct at low Prandtl number. So, this was the governing equation we have derived along with the boundary conditions two boundary conditions for R and two boundary conditions for Z. Okay. Near the leading edge that means uh, uh, in the zone uh, 2 we have found out that we, uh, we require actually uh, del theta del Z is equals to 2 del delta square theta del eta square for large Peclet number case obviously. And away from the uh, leading edge that means in thermally developed region we have found out that Nusselt number actually comes out as 5.7831. Okay. So, this requires little bit idea of Bessel function as I have discussed. Okay. Uh, uh, just like the uh, other uh, lectures let us also test your understanding what you have understood. Uh, we are having two uh, questions over here. First question goes like that at entrance of the tube near the center line energy equation reduces to. So, this is entrance of the tube near the center line that means it is zone 1. 
So, okay, so in zone 1, we are having 4 options over here, del theta del z equals to 0, del theta del z equals to 2 delta square theta del eta square and this is del theta del z equals to 2 delta square theta del r square plus 1 by r del theta del r and none of this. Okay, so obviously you have understood this, we have elaboratedly discussed in this lecture. So, correct answer obviously is the first one. This gives rise to T equals to T i. Okay. Then second question goes like this, thermal boundary layer becomes fully developed at a distance of so, thermal boundary layer becomes fully developed at a distance of means we have to give the value of L e. So, L e uh, options are uh, order of R e, order of Peclet number, order of root Peclet number and Peclet number to the power one third. Okay. I think all of you have guessed what is the correct answer. So, obviously, it is of the order of Peclet number. This we have found out from the scale analysis of zone 2. Okay. So, these two are the questions, uh, uh, I think all of you have got the correct answer. So, here I end my lecture, uh, thank you, uh, please visit our next lecture which is about uh, thermally and hydrodynamically developed flow for uniform heat flux okay. and if you are having any query, please keep on posting in our discussion forum, thank you.